This conference will now be recorded. Hi guys, good evening. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. So we'll start session. So previous class sir, from yesterday's yes. class, I have no one doubt, sir. Yeah, sir, tell me. Uh, we have created two files, one is Apple dot Java and uh, other is test dot Java. So without yeah. importing uh, here, we are directly executing uh, by creating object. Yeah. So we, we have to yeah, import yeah, that class. Yeah, yes, yeah, right. I didn't understand that. Uh, without importing how we are executing that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. It's good. It's good, good question. See, here, test dot Java, employee dot Java, see employee, test dot Java in this employee, even is equal to new employee. Okay. Directly variation, no error message. Reason. Both are in the same package. Both are in the same package. Employee class and test class. Employee and test both are in the same package. If it is same package, importing is not necessary. The same package importing is not necessary. One second. Let me create another package, new package. Yes, com dot. Yes, to get dot. Yes, mna dot. Suppose next package. Package status. Yes. Copy. Sorry. Yes. Copy. And paste this class. Employee class. Copy and paste. Okay. Now here, this employee class deleted. Don't have employee class. This is error message. Now it's error message. Reason employee class is in different package. Employee class in different package. Different package. No. See this error. Yes, import employee from com dot to dot mn dot xh. Sanskrit so imports. Else control space. Imported automatically. Right? Yes. Error message. Import from this package. Yes, imported. Now it's working fine. Yes, if class in the same package, that importing is not necessary. Yes, if it is different package, <laughs> you have to import it. That's it. Is it clear? Doubt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Yes. Yeah, thank yes, you. See, deleting this package, okay? Then play you. So without import, new import, working fine. Same package, same package working fine. Okay. See public class employee, E uppercase rate, class name always use uppercase, don't use lowercase. Class name must be uppercase. Okay. See lowercase used, for example, here. Lowercase used. Then, if class team is rare case where creation of object also must be rare case. This must be rare case. Case in the names are case ends. Names are case ends. Okay. See, it's here. That is the reason. File name is uppercase dot Java, but this lower case. No. Rename compilation in it. Renamed. Renamed. It's lower case. Class is lower case. Yes, this is lower case. No problem. But this type of code is not recommended. Okay. See, public class employee. It's a lowercase name. Lowercase name. Yes, lowercase name. It's valid. Okay. Suppose right is like this employee. Like this. Now it's error message. It's error message. Yes, don't have employee class like this. With uppercase character, don't have. But it's lowercase is there. So not matching to so error message. So how to fix this error? Employee what you could have to fix that. Yes, employee class. So this uppercase, that character is uppercase. Use uppercase. Uppercase. If I'm missing uppercase, now again error. Here error. What is the error here? See, file name is lowercase, but class name uppercase. That names are not matching. 
not matching. Okay, see this here. I'm saying rename comparison unit here. Yes, see public type employee must be defined in its own file. See rename comparison unit employee dot Java. So comparison this is called as yes, comparison unit is employee dot Java is the file name. Okay, rename just rename. Yes, here how to there are two quick fixes. One is rename comparison unit dot Java. That means renaming your file or else rename class here. Rename type T employee here. Okay, see, renamed, class renamed. Okay, yes, but actually class name must be an uppercase. Then what? We should rename the file here. So that case, first one, rename compilation unit employee dot Java. Yes, yes, rename that here. So it is will do that automatically. Okay, fine. Okay, yes, try to see that case sense. Okay, everything is case sense here. Case sense. Okay, yes, Java is a case sense. Java is a case sense. Okay, yes. Okay, fine. Yes, so previous class, yes, method with arguments discussed. Next, employee data discussed. Next, student information assignment given for you. Now, see, let us see some scenario. Yes, class employee, EMP number, e name, salary, department, gender, age, like this. All this one by one assignment can display in that here. Okay, fine. Now, test dot Java, employee even equal to employee here. Even dot set data by passing 1001. Set data by passing 1001. Next name, name, suppose M and Rav. Yes, salary, salary, suppose $9,500. Suppose department name, okay. Suppose ID, yes, gender. Yes, maybe male, yes, is something. Okay, some, let's say something. Set data. After set data, next even dot display. Right? Yes. Now run it. Run as. Here, this is need need not explain about this one here. Even dot set data. All this data pass into set data method. Pass into set data method. Okay. So ENO ascend to enum here. So this all this this data. This data pass into set data method. Set data method. Set data, envo, next e name, yes, next salary, next name, department name, next gender, so next yes, gender and yes, right? This is so envo thousand one ascend the EMP name, next EMP name, like this is next nine thousand find ascend the EMP salary, IT ascend this one, yes, mail ascend this, yes, a ascend this, that's it. So one by one assignment, storing into objects, storing to object, right? So even dot set data. So storing the objects. Even dot set data. So set data method will store all the data into even objects. Even objects. Yes, yesterday I showed that object here. Okay, right. Next even dot display. Displaying all this data. Displaying. Yes, Java application. Displaying all the data. See thousand one. M and draw nine thousand five hundred eighty made something like displaying. So employee dot Java. Displaying all the details. Emblem. Emblem like this. Okay, fine. Yes, next. Now requirement is I want to change the salary. How I can change? I don't want to change all details here. Yes, I want to salary here. How to change salary? E1 dot. Yes, E1 dot. E1 dot set data. Okay. E1 dot set data. Salary changing at 9,500 in place of this, maybe $10,500. Changing to $10,500. Salary changing. But about others, yes, thousand one. Yes, this is same data again here. This is next. This is same data again passing here. Again, same data passing again here. So this is same data passing again, right? Yes. Next half of that, even dot display. Now run it. So initially even dot display some salary. E to the even dot display another salary. Salary value changing, right? It is run it, run as. See. Yes, 10,000 finite. Others are same. So, what is happening here? See, data already available, right? 1001 again overwriting and same 1001. M and R again, same value overwriting, same value. But see, yes. 
unnecessary code right again you are writing same value again you are writing okay so because of only one salary we are trying to overwrite all the data rest of the data right so this is not correct way of writing programming this is not correct way of writing programming for this purpose only for salary purpose you should write separate methods suppose if you want to change name separate method changing department separate method yes changing yes gender separate method okay yes so changing is separate method separate methods are required separate methods are required okay right? see these all are called as param these are parameters parameters these are arguments arguments these are parameters what are the values we are passing those are parameters receivers are arguments in the topic are discussing methods so what are the values we are passing those are parameters okay so same parameters repeatedly we are passing so unnecessary code right because of only one salary again we are writing 1001 yes so again we are writing this one why this is not necessary for salary purpose we should write separate method to change value here suppose if you want to change gender gender we should write separate method for the gender okay right? yes for is separate methods so for every yes for every data or for every instance variable we should write separate method for imp number one method imp name another method salary another method department another method okay so set imp number like set the data set the data for all data members but i want only imp number set imp num set imp name set imp salary set imp department name set imp gender set imp age setter methods how to write setter method let us see in place of set data no writing setter methods class with setter methods class with actually class with setter and getter methods the topic later will discuss how to use getter method later we'll see the topic is different okay yes now public public set yes setter method return type is white like set data return type is white no return value set set yes that member emp num so e caps e caps yes open bracket close bracket set emp number set emp number set emp number yes in this int env int env int env right no emp num is equal to here yes env that's it so writing setter method for the emp number like this okay public white set is not a is not a predefined name, just its user defined name set tmp num its user defined name set tmp num its user defined name is not a predefined name okay emp num equal to env okay correct right? yes next public next public public white set tmp num next emp name next emp name set tmp name set tmp name set tmp name. name yes in this string string yes e name string e name string e name okay right string e name now emp name yes emp name is equal to e name emp name is equal to e name right okay so emp name right next after this public public white public white yes set yes emp name after emp salary emp salary set emp salary set emp salary set emp salary emp salary yes double yes here is a double 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 sal variable sal variable yes no emp salary emp salary is equal to sal emp salary is equal to sal emp salary equal to sal correct okay, right? yes after this public public white public white set emp salary in case of emp salary next next emp department next one set emp department e upper case okay yes method name start with lower case yes if that is multiple words next words are upper case next word upper case next word upper case starting like this okay right yes next yes this way of writing set method department name yes string string d name string d name string d name so department emp department name emp department name emp department name is equal to d name d name okay correct right? yes next public public white yes set department name after that gender set emp gender 
so this is way of writing set parameters like this set emp gender okay string string gender string gender string gender okay string gender so gender so emp gender is equal to gender emp gender is equal to gender gender that again gender that again next next set parameters this is way of writing sir yes say this is this is standard this is nothing is that public white set that yes emps 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 set emps yes e caps e caps here yes in brackets yes int e h variable int e h variable yes next emps is equal to h so this is way of writing set parameters class with set parameters class with set parameters okay yes like this okay so emp number for this set emp number yes emp name set emp name see try to observe this name and this is matching here for easy understand there are some coding standards okay yes next emp name yes emp salary emp department yes emp gender care set emp yes so the coding standards okay coding set writing set parameters like this still this coding standard should be improved We'll discuss which actually here that method we should write like this actually that method we should write like this actual way of writing coding standards this dot emp name equal to emp name here yeah. later we'll discuss yes after discussing about this i'll explain this topic here okay, later we'll see so this is not right name okay yes this is not right name that's the reason i'm using different names different names suppose say here and this one both are same that case you should use this later we'll see yes once you i once you got the idea and this pointer then we'll discuss this one here okay wait okay so set parameters we are writing set parameters like this public void set emp number set emp name yes set emp salary see set parameter written up is always void no written value no written value no written value right okay now what is type of arguments set emp number Yes, same as this one here. Integer, emp name string, string, string. Okay, next solid double, same as that here. Same as that. Yes, instance variables. That's it. So this is right, right writing set parameter like this, set parameters. Next display. That's okay, fine. Yes, now let us go to test class. Yes. Yes, in test class. Yes, e one dot, e one dot, e one dot. Set emp number. First set emp number. Yes, thousand one, thousand one. Now what happened here? Now set emp number. This thousand one filling to instead of even objects, instead of even objects. Emp number. Yes, yesterday I showed some box right, some record like the records. In record first field, second field, third field like that. Yesterday, yes, yesterday some yes we discussed right, like some box. In that first field, emp number, emp name, emp are like right. So first set EMP number. So thousand one, thousand one passing to yes thousand passing to yes ENVO right thousand one as an EMP number EMP number of even objects EMP number of even objects okay yes one thing still doubt is there let me show that yes just matter of two minutes only EMP number EM salary departments. Next gender and yes, okay. So this E one right E one. So first here it's a yes E M P num E M P num yes first E M P num yes next E M P name next E M P E M P salary E M P salary yes next E M P yes department number yes next E M P gender E M P gender E M P gender yes E M P yes E M P yes this is all the members like this E one. So this even object, right? Even object, even object has there. Yes, members like even object members like this. Object like record, record format. Okay. Now here, what happens here? So first here, employee even equal to one second. Employee. Okay. Now here, employee even equal to employee. That will create object like this. After creating object here, 
even dot setting in number. So thousand one simply passing to passing the n word. One second. Same okay, no problem. Reverse also we can. Yes. Now here, see what is happening here. So you apply E1, E apply. Now this will create object like this. After creating object here, E1 dot setting number. Thousand one, thousand one passing to. Yes, E N what this is right. Now E1 dot setting MP chapter E M P number. Is invoking an even object, right? So this method is working on even object now. Set EMP number. This method is working on even object. Now thousand one assigned to thousand one is valid thousand one assigned EMP number. EMP number of current update what? Even. So even EMP number. Current update is even. Even dot set EMP number. Set EMP number is invoked on even object. Even dot set EMP number. So EMP num equal to E N O. What is this value? Thousand one. So thousand one. This is assigned EMP num of even objects. So even objects. So you say thousand one. So like this. So this field the setting is done right. So this is field. This data is field right. Setting EMP num. Data is set. After setting this one here. Next E one dot. See one by one field I am setting here. Yes, even dot set EMP number. Next EMP name. EMP name. Suppose here, M and R passing. M and R. What happens here? Call to set EMP name. So set EMP name. This one, right? This one. By passing M and R. So M and R. So M and R. This is passing to E name. E name, right? What is E name value? M and R. That E name value is M and R. Assign the EMP name. EMP name of E one objects. EMP name of E one objects. See left side one. It's an instance variable. EMP name of even object. Right side one is argument, right? That argument value assigned to left side one means instance variable. EMP name of even object is M and R. So this is M and R. M and R. Right? Okay. Yes. M and R. Just M and R, right? Yes. After this, next. Yes. Even dot. Even dot. Set. Yes. EMP number. Yes. EMP name. Next EMP salary. Yes, EMP salary suppose something like that. Nine thousand five hundred. Yes, same. Setting salary. So the salary storing is instead of this, right? This is so one by one field setting here. Set EMP number. Setting EMP number. So EMP name. So M and R storing to even objects. So one by one field setting like this. C one dot. Yes, set EMP number. EMP name. Salary. Department name. Suppose admin. Admin department like this. One by one field here. One by one field setting here. So one by one field here. So next admin. So setting admin. Admin. Okay, right? Yes. After admin. Yes. Next one. Next one. Yes. Even dot set. Yes. Department name. Next gender. Gender is let us say male. Yes, male. Male, right? Male. Yes, male. So this is now male. So like this, one by one field here. One by one field we are setting. So previously set data method using set data all the fields at a time. Previously using set data methods. Previously using set data methods. Previously using set data method all the fields at a time. All the fields at a time. Okay. Now here one by one. E1 dot E1 dot set EMP gender next EMP age EMP age. Yes, some 29. So this is setting one by one fields like this. Setting one by one fields like this. Okay. So employee, this is okay. So employee, yes, with all the set parameters, all the set parameters. Okay. Yes, next test in test class here. See this. Yes, the employee even object is created here. So set EMP number. So thousand one storing to even objects. 
M name. Yes, M N R store into E one object here. So this nine thousand five hundred store into another. So this first field, second field, third field, fourth field, fifth field, sixth field. So one by one values we are filling here. So using setter method we are storing into E one object. Setter method storing into this one. So setter one setting values one by one here. So one by one setting into E one update right. One 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 by one setting here. So E M P number field setting here. EMP name field here. EMP that means EMP number value is equal to thousand one. That EMP name is equal to MN row. That EMP salary is equal to five thousand nine thousand five hundred. EMP department is equal to admin here. EMP gender is equal to male. EMP is equal to twenty nine. That's it. So one by one field setting is like this. Okay, using certain methods, one by one fields you can set it. Okay. Now even dot display. Yes. Run it. After setting all this, just run it. Run as display. See that getting this thousand one M N R nine thousand five hundred admin mail on twenty nine. That's it. Now I want to change only salary. I don't want all this here. I want salary here. Even dot set. Yes, simply I can call just E M P salary. That's it. E M P salary by passing ten thousand five hundred. What happens here? Just be calling only this method. So ten thousand five hundred simply passing to. Yeah, that set EMP salary. This method, right? Methods, sal EMP salary ko sal. Just one. This is assigning, not all the fields. Only one field changing, right? Only one field. This is advantage of using separate methods. So only particular field we are changing. This is advantage of using separate methods. Okay. Yes. So salary changing. After changing salary here, E1 dot display, display. Now run it, run it, run as series. All are same, except salary. Right? Only salary field changes. That's it. Only salary field. So to change particular field here, certain method is required here. Certain for each and every field separate method required. Okay. Not only certain method in real time we need some certain and getter methods. In real time we need to have both certain and getter methods. Certain method is store the data here. Getter method is read the data. Storing and reading. Storing, writing, and reading. Storing means writing. Yes, reading. Okay, so writing and reading. Separate and get them. Call us some poster class. That poster class later we'll discuss. After finishing this this keyword, I'll explain about poster class later. We'll see. Okay, so this is way of writing separate methods. Way of writing yes, separate methods like this. Separate methods like this. Okay, so here in particular field, setting value for the particular fields here. Okay. Set EMP number only. Yes, EMP name only. Yes, EMP salary. Yes, department name only here. Yes, gender only here. Yes. Then display. Now changing only salary on display. Suppose next again changing one more here. Suppose set. For example, department name change here. Yes, in place of admin, maybe change to IT department. Change to IT employee. Change to IT department. Even that display. Not displaying this. Is. See, run it. Run as. Run as. See that these are initial details. Okay. So next time only salary changed. Next time only department changed. That's it. Here. So one by one changing data like this. Using setter methods you can change data like this. So this is class with setter methods. Okay. This is just a setter method. Just little bit introduction here. So next level we should move to next level. Okay. So this is just idea. Next level is there. There are some standards in certain methods. The topic will see next. Okay. Yes. One second. Yes. Let us open document. Yes. Yes. All these examples. So till now, what I've discussed, all the examples, it's there in document. You can follow document. Once again.
Yes. Yes, classes and objects. So this topic with memory map, all we discussed. Yes, complicated this is. Student information set data. Yes, compare information using set data. Yes, next. Class with set parameters. Yes. Private in DMP ID, EMP name, EMP cell, EMP department. Set EMP ID, set EMP name, set EMP cell, set EMP departments. Okay. Yes, employee, new employee, set EMP number, set EMP name, salary department display. This is displaying all the rates after changing EMP name, set EMP name. So that name change rates, department changing, then display. Next, changing salary only, displaying the same. Okay. So this is class with set number. Okay, right. Yes, next. Next is about method overloading. So, what is method overloading? Yes, next topic about method overloading. What is method overloading? See, public class, suppose sample class. Sample class in this. Sample class. In sample class, by the same name, we can write multiple methods. Suppose if it is C language, functional oriented. C is a functional oriented language. C is a functional oriented language. In functional oriented language here, once defined a method with name here, that name should not repeat it. Okay. Yes, even number of argument, type of arguments, even different here. Once name different, that should not be repeated. Name should not be repeated. But in whoops concept, it's a valid. Yes, how it's valid here. Yes, maybe in C, maybe Java, Python, somewhere implementing, implementing that concept. It's valid. Same name, yes, but multiple methods. By the same name, writing multiple methods. C public, public, white, public, white, C public, white, suppose writing display methods, writing display, display, display method, right? By the same name, I can write one more method, one more method, but it's the error message. Reason, everything is the same is duplicate method, right? Same method, repeat again, same as is repeat, duplicate it, duplicate method. For this purpose, I think something here. Yes, here, no arguments, here one argument, now it's valid. It's valid, okay? Suppose same method, again writing here, okay? No, same, duplicate method as this. Duplicate method for this purpose. Suppose let us change something like this. Now it's valid. Okay, right? See, these two cases differing with number of arguments. These two cases differing with the type of argument, right? This concept is nothing but say method of overloading. Method of overloading. This concept is a method of overloading. Okay. Yes, in this here, no arguments. Here, one argument. Here, one argument. Type is different. That means here, number of arguments one here. Number of arguments one, but type is different, right? Number of argument, type of argument. All this concept is signature, method signature. This concept is called some method signature. Okay, so method signature. So what is exactly method signature? Public white display in TX comma, suppose float white, float white, float white. Okay, this whole thing is called as method signature. Same concept in C language is a prototype concept. In C language, prototype of a function. In C language, color prototype. Okay. One second. Let me explain. Finance. Let me finish. Okay. My way of explaining is somewhat different. I'm coming reverse. I'm coming reverse. Generally, most of the trainers they will explain definition. After explaining definition, they will write the program. They will show that. But my way of explaining the first step practically i'll explain then i'll frame the definition reverse okay wait i'll explain okay my way of explaining is always reverse first for understanding purpose i'll explain practically then i'll convert into definition suppose simply i'm explaining definition means something like a by hurting okay the explaining simply definition simply explaining definition then going for programming some something like a Yes, something like a by hurting. No, I don't want like that here. 
practically. So reverse. Now here, see public wide display, public wide display, public wide display. See this whole thing is called as method signature. This whole thing is called as method signature. Same concept in C language calls it prototype, function prototype, function prototype. In C language, function prototype. In Java, on C++. This is called as method signature. Signature. In OOPS concept, it's a method signature. What is method signature? Method signature defines name of the method. Signature tells. Method signature tells name of the method. Number of arguments. Type of arguments. And return type. This whole thing is called as method signature. Method signature. Whole thing is called as method signature. Okay, right? Yes, if class contain, yes, if class contains, if class contains multiple methods. Okay, sorry, if class can kind of say methods, same, yes, if class can kind of say methods for multiple times with different signature, then it's called as method already. If class contains, if class contains, if class contains multiple methods. Okay. Yes, sorry. If class can same method for multiple times, same methods, same methods, same methods for multiple times with a different signature, different signature, no arguments, two arguments, one argument is different signature. So this concept is called as method overloading. Okay. So method overloading. Yes, method overloading always takes place between the different same methods with different signature. Okay, method of overloading. Method overloading takes place between the same methods with different signature. Method overloading. Method overloading. Yes, all method overloading takes place in the same, between the same methods, different signature. The signature should be differing here, otherwise cannot overload. Okay. So method overloading. Method overloading takes place between the same methods with different signature. What is method signature? Method signature defines name of the methods, number of arguments. Next, type of the arguments, next return type. This is method overloading concepts. Okay, if class contains, if class contains same method for multiple times with a different signature, called as method overloading. If class contains, if class contains same method, display, display, display like this, same method for multiple times with different signature, is called as method overloading. It's a method overloading, okay. What is purpose of method overloading? We'll discuss next page. Purpose we'll discuss. Okay. See, method overloading. Method overloading is between same methods. Simple. Method overloading is between same methods with different signature. Method overloading is between the same methods with different signature. Same methods. Same methods, but different signature. Different signature. Okay. Okay, fine. Yes, here, how it's overloading express here. Yes, while overloading here. First of all, yes, once again, one more. Method overloading is always compile time. Method overloading is always compile time. Next, we have one more concept, method overriding. Method override, that is runtime. Method overriding is runtime. Overloading is compile time. Yes, overriding, it's a, yes, it's an inheritance concept. With inheritance, we'll discuss overriding. Overriding later. Overriding later, we'll discuss. Okay. So overloading, method overloading is always at compile time. Method overloading is always at compile time. At compile time, first of all, compiler checks for number of arguments between the methods. So first of all, compiler, compiler. Okay, so compiler. First of all, compiler checks number of arguments between methods. Suppose if number of arguments are matched, then checking for type of arguments. Type also matched means everything is matched. If everything is matched, it's error message, message. Okay, so method overloading. Method overloading is always at compile time. At compile time itself, compiler first of all checking for number of arguments between the methods. Number of arguments between the methods. Number of arguments between the methods. If number of arguments are matched, then checking for type of arguments. Type of arguments. Support type is also matched here, error message, that's it. Okay, yes, we'll see some practical examples. We'll see some practical examples. I'll, I'll tell you one second. Doubt your doubt. And we take two main methods with different arguments. Simple as yes, we can take it. No problem. But but JVM makes a call to only main yes. 
JVM makes a call to only actual methods like public static void main string error box. Yes, this is JVM main methods. So this is JVM. JVM always called to only this method here, not other main methods. Okay. Yes, we can write one more main method, no problem. But suppose same main methods repeated. Yes, error message. Duplicate. Duplicate, right? Suppose let us remove this is. Now it's working. Okay. This is string error box. This one is string. This is multiple strings. This is single string. The type is changing here. This is the array of things, type of arguments changed here. It's, it's working. Okay. Yes, if it is having same signature, not worried. So this is this is this one on this one. Same signature. Everything is not matching. Everything is matching. That's the reason not working here. Not working. Okay, fine. Yes. Now let us go to document here. Let us see documents. See method of overloading. See method of overloading takes place between the same methods with different signature. So method of overloading. Method of overloading. Method of overloading takes place between the same methods with different signature. Yes. Method signature defines name of the methods, number of arguments, type of arguments, unwritten type of the methods. Name of the methods. Method signature defines name of the methods. Name of the method display. Number of arguments, two arguments, type of arguments, intent floats. Next written type, wide. That's it. Okay. Name of the methods, number of arguments, then type of arguments, next written type. Okay. So method signature defines this one here. Okay. Yes. Next method overloading is a compile time process. Next one more we have method overriding that is runtime process. Later we'll see. Okay. So first the compiler checks for number of arguments. First of all, compiler at compile time. First of all, compiler checks for number of arguments. If number of arguments are matched, matched, then checks for type of arguments. Okay. If number of arguments are matched, match between methods, between methods here, then checks for yes, then checks for type of arguments. Type of arguments. Okay. Yes. Type of arguments. Suppose if type is also matched, ambiguity, conflict. Ambiguity means confusion uh, between methods and shows comparison error. Comparison shows error messages. Okay. See, method overloading is a compile time process. Compile time binding or static binding. This point later we'll discuss. In polymer version, we'll discuss that. Compile time binding and runtime binding. Compile time or static binding. Compile time binding or static binding. Next, runtime binding or dynamic binding. That concept we'll discuss, we'll discuss in, in polymer version. That time I'll explain. Okay, so first let us start. Yes, based on number of arguments. Overloading based on number of arguments. Overloading based on number of arguments. Let us see. Overloading based on number of arguments. Okay, yes. Method overloading is bit method of overloading is between the same methods with different signature. Method of overloading is between the same methods with different signature. Signature defines name of the method, number of arguments, type of arguments, and written type. Name of the method, number of arguments, type of arguments, and written type. Okay. Yes, method overloading is always at compile time. Method overloading. Method of overloading is always at compile time. Okay. So method of overloading is always at compile time. Okay. At compile time itself, first of all, compiler checks for number of arguments. If number of arguments are matched, then check for type of arguments. Type is also matched, then error message. First, let us start with overloading based on number of arguments. Method of overloading based on number of arguments. Public white display. Public white display. Display. Yes, starting ending. System dot out dot meter and yes, no arcs. No arcs. Display with no arcs. No arcs. No arcs. No arcs, right? No arcs. Same display. Yes, copy and paste. Yes, error message. Reason everything is matching here. No arcs. Here are no arcs. Now let us make it one argument in TX. Yes, now it's working. So what is happening here? Differing with number of arguments. 
differing with our topic is differing with number of arguments. Okay. Now one arc. This is one arc here. One arc. Okay. Right? Yes. Now. Yes. Writing again same name. Yes. Now between this and this error. Right? This and this both are matching error message. So here error message. Okay. Duplicate method display. Okay. Right? Now index. This error solved. But here this between these two error message, right? Error message. So what? What is happening? Duplicate method again here. Okay. Now let us make it one more argument into y. Yes. Is not matching. Now it's working. Now it's a two arcs. It's a two arcs. It's a two arcs. It's a two arcs, right? Okay. Yes. Next. Next. Same method again here. Same method. Yes. Error with first one. Now let us make it in takes. Yes, now second one on this one matching error. Okay, right. now let us add one more argument index. Index added. Now these two errors solved, but now error between this because matching here. Comma, yes, int, int by, int by. Okay, okay no arcs, two arcs, 100. Two arcs, one arc, two arcs, and three arcs. Okay, now three arcs. Okay, so this is say this here. Into y, next into z, into z. Okay, so first here, no arcs. Okay, no arcs. Next one arc, two arcs, then three arcs. That's it. So this is overloading based on number of arguments. This is overloading based on number of arguments. Okay. Yes. So sample class. Sample class. Display display. Overloading based on number of arguments. Now. Test class. Let us test this one here. Yes. Sample. Sample. Yes. One is equal to new sample. New sample. Okay. Now yes. One dot display series. Yes. Next. Yes. One dot. Display type D. Yes, next display by passing. Yes, one parameter. Then call to method with one argument. Okay. Now this case call to method with no arguments. Yes, no arguments. This call to method with one argument. Method with one argument. Yes, one dot display. Yes. Passing something like one two. So method with two arguments. Yes, one dot display. Yes, method with three arguments. Maybe ten. 20. Yes, that's like this. That's it. Okay. So first one, method with no arguments. Second one, method with one argument. Next, method with two arguments. Method with three arguments. So yes, one dot display. So call to first method. This is no arcs. Okay. Next, yes, one dot display by passing 10. One parameter means call to method with one argument. So this method calling. Okay, right. Suppose two parameters passing, two parameters, two arguments. Call to two arguments from this one here, two arcs. Next, three, we are passing three values. Means call to method with three parameters. That's it. So this is overloading based on number of arguments. Based on number of arguments. Run it. Run as. That's yes, no arcs. For this, no arcs. For this one, one arcs. For this one, two arcs. For this one, three arcs. So this is overloading best number of arguments. Yes, see this. Yes, order of calling can be anyone, no problem, no issue. Yes, any method can be called from anywhere, no issue here. Okay. Yes, here requirement of calling three arguments for can call it. So maybe two next one, next. Yes, like this. Three arguments, two arguments, no arguments, and one argument, like this also can call it. Depends on requirements. You can call any methods. There is no order of calling that methods. You can call any methods. Three arcs, two arcs, no arcs, one arcs. That's it. Okay. Yes, maybe like this. Here depends on calling here. It's working. Three arcs, no arcs, two arcs, one arcs. That's it. Okay. So this is overloading based on number of arguments. Overloading based on number of arguments. One second. Now let us see some data. Date, let us take some data. Private. Yes, private. 
into private into a private into a suppose private into a private into b private into c okay yes public public white set data yes here you have to answer it here yes here set data a equal to zero next b equal to zero here c equal to zero here see here i'm writing some program like this okay yes finally you have to answer this program okay yes try to observe it set data no arguments a value 0, B value 0, C value 0. H set the data. Both are matching. Error message. Now here, int x. Int x. I am passing one argument. The text I am taking to A. H done. Next. Public white set data. Int x comma int y. Int x comma int y. So x taking to A, y taking to B. Correct. Okay, right. See, first case all are zeros. Second case, one parameter available is assigned to it, A. Next, others are zeros. Second, in this case, two arguments, right? Two values available. So, first one assigned to A, second one assigned to B. Third one C is zero. Correct. Okay, right. Yes, next. Next method. Next method. Int x, int y, next int z, int z. A equal to x, B equal to y. C equal to Z, C equal to Z, C equal to Z, right? Yes, now public white white display, public white display, displaying all this. Yes, display, yes, system dot out dot pendulum, you're displaying A value plus tab, plus B value plus tab plus C, just space between that. Okay, tab is a space. So this okay. Now this word only based number of arguments, right? No arguments, one argument, two arguments, and three arcs. That's it. Overloading based on number of arguments. Overloading based on number of arguments. Now sample yes one equal to sample. Okay. Yes, next. Sample yes one, yes two, yes three, yes four, something like this. Yes one, yes two, yes three. Yes, four. Okay. Sample S1, sample S2, S3, S4. Four objects are created. Now S1 dot set data. No arguments. S2 dot S2 dot set data by passing one. By passing ten. One here. S3 dot set data by passing ten comma twenty. Okay. Next. S4 dot set data by passing yes one second yes four dot yes four dot set data yes last one the upper key down in select that last one yes hundred yes two hundred next three hundred look okay, after that yes one dot display yes two dot display next yes three dot display yes yes four dot Yes, now what's the output of this program? Yes. So first yes one dot set data. First yes one dot set data. So call to set data method on yes one objects. See, yes one dot set data. Set data is invoking on yes one. Okay. No set data is working on yes one objects. A equal to zero means yes one a value zero. S1 B value 0, S1 C value 0. So fine. So S1 object against what all are zeros that is clear. Next, S2 dot set data by passing 1. S2 dot set data by passing 1. Now call to set data by passing on this, this, this method, calling this method. What is value of x? 1. Value of x is 1. Value of x is 1. The okay, value of x is 1 here. Now a equal to x. What is a value? It's a 1. What is a value? It's a 1. See, s yes, 2 dot set data by passing 1, right? So 1 passing the x. That x value 1. 1 ascend to a of s2 objects. Now this time working for s2 object. s2 a value 1. 
B value zero, C value zero. Okay. Yes. Next. Similarly here, S three dots data by passing ten and twenty. Call to data method with two arguments. So two parameters passing, then call to method with two arguments. So two arguments. This method. Right? This method. This method. Okay. Now S three dots data by passing ten and twenty. So ten passing to X, twenty passing to Y. So value of x is 10, value of y is 20. A equal x. A means current object A, which is current object here. See, I'll write S2, S3, S3. So S3 A value is 10. So this is 10, 20. B value 20. C value what? Zero. That's it. Okay, right? So next step. So S1 all are zeros. S2 A value one, B value zero zero. Yes, next step. Yes, uh, S3. A value 10, B value 20, C value 0. S4 dots data, 100, 200, 300. That's it. Now S1 dot display. What is the output of S1 dot display? Display methods, display methods, displaying all the values. A, B, C value, all three values. Yes. What is S1? A value, B value, C value, zeros. Right? You were right. Yes. Next, S2 dot display. So A value 0, B value 0, C value 0. All are zeros. S2 dot display. A value 1, S B value 0, C value 0. C. Only one pass in H. That one assigned to A. Yes, others are zeros. Right, next. S3 dot display here. So this is 10 assigned to A, 20 assigned to B, C value 0. So 10, 20. So 10, 20. A equal 10, B equal 20. C is what? 0. That's it's a 0 here, right? It's 0. Next. Yes, four dot display. All right, yes, four dot display hundred. See, hundred, two hundred, three hundred. So, hundred, two hundred, two, three hundred here. So, this is A equal hundred, B equal two hundred, C equal three hundred. That's it. So, this output two hundred, then three hundred. So, this is working a four loading concept here. Okay, method with no argument that case all are zeros. One argument with first value one, others are zeros. Two arguments. First two values. A third one is zeros. Next, all three values. That's it again. Okay. Right click. Nice. Yes. Yes. Zeros. zeros. One zero zero. Ten twenty zero. Yes. Hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Like this. That's it. So this is based on number of arguments. Overloading based on number of arguments. Okay. Right? Yes. Next. Overloading based on type of arguments. Let us see that example. Overloading based on type of arguments. Yes, private int A here, private code B, yes, private char CH. Different type of data. Set data, no arguments. Okay. Set data. One second. Set data. CH. One second. A value. 0, B value 0.0 F, which is a float, CH values, yes, backslash 0 is null value. CH is null value. Null is not a printable character. C, character null value is equal to integer 0. Integer 0, character null is same. Okay, integer 0 0.0, float is 0 0.0 F, yes, character is null. Backslash 0 is null character. This value is equal to zero, integer zero. That value is equal to integer zero. Okay. So set data. Yes. Same set data writing again. Yes. Repeated error messages. For this. Yes. Int x. Now this is overloading based on number of arguments. No argument for the one argument. Overloading based. Based on number of arguments. All right. Now int x here. Okay. Yes, comma. Yes, next float. Float by. So this int x, integer value, ascend integer variable a. Float value by, ascend variable b. Okay, for ch, no value, null. Yes, two arguments. Yes, integer type of data is available, ascend integer variable. Float type of data is available, ascend float variable. But character not available, it's null, null value here. Now, see method. See, now between these two, overloading based on number of arguments. Here, no arguments, 
is it two arguments so these two comes from what overloading based on number of arguments it's a overloading based number of arguments okay now both are matching it's a rms yes number of arguments yes same methods same number of arguments same type of arguments everything is matching here it's a rms okay now here i'm using type change right now first checking for number of arguments if number of arguments are matched then checking for what type type means different right so it's valid okay so first checking for number of arguments see number of arguments are matched error message okay so what type differing now it's valid if number of arguments matching then checking for type now type is differing it's valid a equal to x b equal to that float value is not always simply i'm making a 0.0f okay yes ch equal to y yes value of i ascend ch because that type of data is available ascend is ch okay yes next let us write one more method same values same same here not valid error message now let us write another combination float and character let's valid okay float and character okay a equal to x yes integer type of data is not all same zero now b equal to x yes float type of data is available ascend this range next char message okay see first case integer float available ascend integer variable float variable character is not all is null taken simply okay next integer character available integer character available yes float is 0.0 taken simply not all simple 0.0 okay right float and character float and character so float and character integer not available it's zero that's it okay this is overloading based on type of arguments overloading based on type of arguments a b and c h a b and c h a b and c h okay yes all this now go to here s1 s2 s3 s4 okay s1 dot set data means no data passing means all are zeros yes two dots set data yes 10.5 comma 20 see yes two dots set data yes two dots set data i am passing this in float and character yes yes two dots set data by passing float and character I am passing float and character. Suppose twenty point five. Suppose character A. Okay. Now say still error message. What's the reason? Twenty point five and character A. See twenty point five. It's a float. Float and character. Float and character. So here A is okay. Twenty point five. Yes, it's a double. Twenty point five is double. It's a double. Now convert it to F. Make it F floats. It's valid. It's valid. Okay. Yeah. Vijay, wait, wait. I'll explain. Okay. I'll explain. Yes. Overloading word. By using overloading word. I'll explain. Just wait. Okay. I'll explain. Yes. Yes. Three dots data. Yes. Three dots set data. Suppose next integer character, integer character, then comma suppose character x, integer character. That's it. Okay, next, yes for dot set data, yes integer floats. Then suppose hundred comma yes fifty point five yes. That's it. Now yes for dot display. What is output of this? Yes for dot display, all zeros. Yes for dot set data, no data passing, all zeros. Yes, two dot display. What is output? Float and character passing. Float and character passing. What happens here? Yes, yes, two dot display. Float and character passing means integer is zero, character is a. That's it. Yes, three dot display. In case of S three, integer character passing that float is zero. Integer character passing so float is zero. Next, yes, four dot display here. Integer float passing character is null. That's it. Okay. Yes. Save. Now run it. See, that's it. So all zeros, integer zero, 
yes fruit 0.0 character null null is not a printable character you cannot see null is not a printable character now this case integer is zero float and character value this case integer and character float is 0.0 yes integer and float character is null so this is overloading based on overloading based on number of arguments and type of arguments overloading overloading based on based on number of arguments and type of arguments okay yes in real time some issues in overloading there are some issues in overloading there are some issues what kind of issues getting here okay set the data public white set data set data suppose here for example here long x long x public white set data long x okay yes yes one dot set data see byte b is equal to 10 short yes is equal to 100 int i is equal to 1000 long l is equal to something like this okay approach f is equal to 20.5 f double double d equal to yes some 30 see different type of variables different type of data okay set data set data set data what is type of argument long type long type long type now here yes can i pass variable b here set data by passing b yes semicolon remote b yes can i pass b yes, error message can i pass b i am passing b to long x passing variable b to long x is it valid yes what is size of b one byte size of b one byte one byte of data assigned to eight bytes of location valid it's a valid semicolon yes place semicolon no error so byte can be passed to long okay right? same thing here Yes, set data bytes, then short. Short can be passed to long. Okay, right? Short. Next, integer i. I can be integer can be passed to long here. Next, long passing to long. Long passing to long. Okay, right? Yes, next. Float passing to long. That's not valid. Okay. Float cannot be passed to long type here. Means real number type of data you cannot pass to integer type of into the type of arguments okay next similar double double also not valid so these two cases not valid these two not valid okay these two not valid no these are valid valid so this is a type promotion concept already we have discussed it type promotion so byte passing to long short passing long integer passing long long passing to long so this is type promotion okay see Simple here. Any type of data can be passed. Any type of data can be passed. Any type of argument. If, if, if size of data, if size of data, if size of data is less than size of arguments. Any type of data see any type of data can be passed to any type of arguments if size of argument is if size of argument is greater than data size if this size is greater than size of data then valid okay right so this is all type promotions like this 
five promotions. Correct. Next. Yes, real number data cannot be passed in these type of arguments. Real data. Real some real numbers like yes one dot yes one dot set data by passing floats cannot. So the data float value cannot be passed to in this type of location chat. Cannot be. So for real, if you want, then you should go for type casting. Same like a previously type casting. Make it long here. Make it long. Then you can pass it. The float converting long, then passing valid. You have to make it type casting here. Okay. Small type of data you can pass to big type of arguments. The small type of data can be passed to big type of argument. Correct. Okay. Next. Next here. Integer number can be passed to float type of argument. Let us take float type of argument here. Float. Suppose this is float in place of line, it's a float. Float x. Float x. See, it's working. All are working. Byte pass into float, it's working. Yes, short pass into float, it's working. Integer pass into float, it's working. Long pass into float, it's working. Okay, same concept we discussed in typecasting. Typecasting. Okay. Yes, integer number can be converted to float implicitly. It's implicit casting. Implicitly casting here. So integer data can be passed to float type of argument. Float type of argument is implicit casting. Implicitly can pass it. Implicitly casting. Okay, but reverse is not valid. Okay, reverse. Reverse means float type of data cannot be passed to integer. Yes, already discussed. So really, if you want, really if you want, you should go for type casting. You should go for typecast. Really, if you want, if you should go for typecasting. Now, what happens here? Float 20.5F. Float 20.5F. Now, what happens here? Now, this is converting to long, right? The float F is converting into long. What happens here? The dot five terminates and passing 20 only. Passing 20 only. Okay. So here, when you passing data to arguments here, okay. Yes, the integer. Yes, integer data. Yes, can be passed to can be passed to integer type of uh, integer type of arguments. If if size of data size of data less than less than size of arguments size of arguments is valid. If size of data less than size of argument here. Integer type of data. Integer data can be passed to integer type. Arguments if size of data less than size of argument. Size of argument. Let us see this concept here. Suppose this is integer. Suppose let us say it's a short. It's a short, right? Short x. Short x. See, byte pass into short. Short pass into short. But integer not passing that. Failing here. So what is happening here? Size of data is more than type of arguments not valid not valid okay it's, this is not valid okay that is first condition okay yes next one second one yes integer data yes integer data yes can be can be can be passed to pass it to yes float type of argument float type of arguments float type of argument. yes it's implicitly Implicitly, this is okay. See, integer data can be passed to integer type of argument if size of data less than size of argument. So, this is implicitly small type to big type. Small type can be passed to big type. Simply here, small, just small, small type, small type can be passed to pass it to big type. Yes, it's a implicitly passing here. Implicitly passing here. Okay, small type can be passed to big type of argument, big type of arc, big type of arcs. Okay, next integer data can be passed to float type of arguments. So this implicitly, so this implicitly, this implicitly, right? Suppose if you want reverse type casting, we should go for expert casting here. Suppose, yes, if you want big type of data, big type, big type of data, big type of data. Yes, big type of data, big type of data, big type of data. Yes, passing to passing to small type of arguments, 
yes x with casting equation small type small type of arguments x with casting equation explicitly at casting x with casting equation casting equation like type casting explicitly at casting okay simplicity that is not explicitly this is explicitly here explicitly explicitly okay so explicitly explicit like this so big type of big type of data pass into small type of argument is explicit casting you have to cast it explicitly okay right? next second case second case second case float yes float type of data float type of data float type of data yes passing to float type of data yes passing to integer yes passing to passing to integer type yes passing to yes integer integer type of work then expert casting expert casting that's it like okay, type casting nothing is there okay right so this is uh, when you passing data yes you have to take care of these things here you should take care of these things okay yes now here this is see overloading best number of arguments next overloading with data some example both examples are discussed next overloading best and type of arguments int a float b character ch set data no ax set data int float combination int char next float char different combinations display okay see next see method of overloading type promotion see any type of any data can be passed in type of argument if size of data is less than size of argument okay yes any any data can be passed to any type of argument if size of data is less than size of argument that's okay next see integer type of data can be promoted as real number it simplicity yes real number cannot be promoted as integers real if you want explicit casting see char byte short int can be passed to int or long type of arguments char type of data can also pass to integer type of arguments that's it okay there are conditions here okay right? next one more important question inter equation this is inter equation here suppose you say display methods display display methods display methods yes no arguments no arguments okay suppose here int int x here int x okay yes next so error message it's a float y so this is the one argument two arguments values now same thing here i'm repeating here same method error message now what i'm doing here written Return ten. One second. See this. Return ten. Here it says enter. Okay. See here. Method names matching. Names of methods matching. Number of arguments are matching. Next type of argument matching. But type is not matching. Not this is valid or not. Yes, you see enter equation. Yes. Now this code is valid or not? This code is valid or not? See here method overloading. Checking for number of arguments. Number of arguments are matched. Okay. Next after that checking for type of arguments. Type of arguments. Type of number of arguments are matched. Type of arguments are matched. That case. That case. Does it check for return type? Yes. Now, is it checking for return type or not? Okay. See, number of arguments are matched. Okay. Next, type of arguments also matched. Everything is matched, but return type is different. Now, this one is it valid or not? Yes, valid. Saying that valid. 
Sandeep saying that invalid. Okay, let us check it. Yes, now Eclipse. Yes, Eclipse. Here in the, in the make it in this is. Yes, still it's the error message. Still it's the error message. Okay, see why should in notepad means same thing if I ask it in Eclipse, what of Eclipse itself shows error message. Yes, Eclipse itself showing error message. That's the reason in notepad prepared this is and ask a question. Okay, see Eclipse itself showing error message. See here method overloading checking for method overloading checking for number of argument type of argument, but never checks for written type. This is question, interview question. Does method overloading checking for written type? No, it won't check for written type. Method overloading does not check for written type, but method overriding checks for written type. That is the reverse. Method of overloading, method of overriding. Method of overloading is a compile time, method of overriding is runtime. Method of overloading is between same methods, different signature. Overriding is same signature. Next, overloading does not check for written type, overriding checking for written type. Yes, exactly reverse. Yes, that concept we'll see later. Overriding concept we'll see later. Yes, it's a part of inheritance. That time we'll compare this once again. Once method overriding comes, the topic comes after finishing overriding, we'll compare overloading overriding. It's a compulsory interview question. What's the difference between overloading and overriding? Overloading and overriding. Maybe asking this question. Okay. Yes. Their main difference. What's the main difference between overloading and overriding? Overloading never checking for written type, but overriding checking for written type. That point later we'll see. Now at this stage, Method overloading does not check for written type. Method overloading checking for number of arguments. Next type of arguments. Overloading checking for number of arguments and type of arguments only. Never checking for written type. Overloading. Overloading does not check for written type. Okay. Yes. Try to remember that point here. Yes. See method or note. Method overloading never check for written type. Method overloading never checking for written type. Okay. So this is about method overloading. Okay. Yes. Next topic. Yes, this topic tomorrow will continue. Okay. Yes, that's all for today. Yes, we'll continue tomorrow, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. See you guys. See you tomorrow.